Hello, friends. This is Scott Monty. Stand by for commentary. Welcome to the Full Monty, where you'll be exposed to commentary and analysis from the week's digital news. You give us 15 minutes, and we'll save you hours. And now, here's your host, Scott Monty. Hi, and welcome to the Full Monty, an audio companion to the newsletter of the same name. Each week, I pick a couple of the more pressing issues and inject insight, opinion, and wit into this 15-minute show. It's sure to give you a better sense of what's affecting the industry. Maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't, but I hope it makes you think. This week, a look at how LinkedIn promotes spam and considering the cult of personality in the wake of Charles Osgood's last CBS Sunday morning. LinkedIn Spam Last week, I made a major career announcement. Together with four partners, I launched the executive consultancy Brain Trust Partners. We pulled all of the usual levers, press release, media and influencer briefings, blog posts, social network sharing, and profile updates. As you would expect, one of those updates was on LinkedIn. What I've always considered to be the most adult-like of the social networks. Now, when you update your position and company on LinkedIn, you have the option of showing this publicly, which means that your followers may see it. For example, my update would have appeared on your screen as Scott has a new job, now CEO and co-managing partner of Brain Trust Partners. Then, LinkedIn gives you three options, ostensibly to help you Stay in touch with the person. You can like their update, message them, or skip the options altogether. The message button then pre-populates a message balloon with, quote, congrats on the new role. I hope you're doing well, unquote. All very innocuous when you send one of those to someone. But imagine being on the other end of that messaging system for a moment and receiving literally hundreds of greetings that were carbon copy or only slight variations on Congrats, Congrats on the new role. I hope, I hope you're, you're doing, doing well. well. Yeah, that creates a culture of spam. It's not that users are lazy necessarily. It's that LinkedIn's user interface or UI has made it all too easy to take a shortcut that tries to be human but then ends up doing just the opposite. So I wrote a letter to LinkedIn. Dear LinkedIn, This may come as a shock, but I need to see other platforms. I've sneaked around on you before, yet I always return because you've been the most professional social network, and I've blindly maintained a sense of loyalty. But I'm afraid I just can't go on like this any longer. You were always utilitarian in a way that served my needs perfectly. You were a repository for my online CV. You allowed me to connect with other people I've met in real life. You allowed me to share links, join groups, or even pen longer pieces. But lately, well, you've let yourself go. Your new messaging interface is confusing. It's all too easy to click on Add Connections when I'm trying to get to the drop-down See Invitations from the Notifications toolbar. And good Lord, those invitations. I have to hover over that little mail icon just to see the message. And since you no longer allow users to customize their connection requests, every single invitation begins with, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. Every single one. Maybe there's a way to customize that. If so, I haven't found it on the mobile app, and the slick interface you've created on the web version of the People You May Know page is full of connect buttons, which, when I click on them, shoot out a request without giving me the option to customize an invitation. That's awfully inconsiderate and impersonal of you, don't you think? And in this hyper-connected world where we're all looking for contextual relevance, you've managed to remove that. 
I would hope that at your age and your maturity, not to mention your market cap, you'd be able to hire some UI designers or UX designers that could give you the counseling and therapy that you so desperately need right now. If you do that, I know you'll make some other users very happy in the future. But for now, I need a break. To be clear, it's not me. It's you. Are LinkedIn notes just copied quotes that come from an inferior app? Maybe I'm hazy. Are people this lazy? Or maybe the UI is just crap. Get your trivia skills ready for the Naked Truth. This week's Naked Truth trivia question. What audio behemoth says it aims to be the Netflix of music radio with its phone-first strategy? Answer at the end of the show. And now page two. The Cult of Personality. Sounds ominous, doesn't it? Well, to be sure, the concept of the cult of personality is usually meant for something nefarious, such as an individual who uses propaganda to create an idealized, heroic, and at times worshipful image, often through unquestioning flattery and praise. But when you think about it in terms of your favorite brands, or books, or television shows, for example, it's a less threatening concept. In such cases, it's more likely brand loyalty. Only the brand happens to be a person. Well, we've all got our favorite people. I know I'll watch anything that Paul Giamatti is in, or read any biography written by David McCullough or Ron Chernow. And if you haven't picked this up by now, some of my audio heroes are Paul Harvey and Charles Osgood. Osgood in particular interests me. We share an affinity for bow ties and for semi-passable doggerel, that style of poetry that's more suited to Dr. Seuss than William Shakespeare. And you probably know by now that on September 25th, 2016, Charles Osgood celebrated his final appearance as host of CBS Sunday Morning, a role he held for 22 years. The entire broadcast was a tribute to Osgood and his style, and was accompanied online by the hashtag Celebrating Charlie. Throughout all of the crescendo to his final show, there wasn't a single word about his replacement. While there may have been speculation in the media, it didn't rise to a point where it dominated the news. The focus was still on Charlie. Even when he turned to his successor, Jane Pauley, in the last five minutes of the broadcast, she turned the focus back to him, letting everyone know that Osgood's famous bow tie would be welcomed into the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of American History. That's what you call the cult of personality. And it'll be difficult for Pauly to fill his role. She'll have her own fans that she'll bring along, but there will be a sense of ennui and wistful longing for Charlie on Sunday mornings all across America. And Polly certainly won't be wearing a bow tie. And so I'll leave you now for Charles Osgood to close like he always did, with a poem and my own version of his sign-off. For those who have lusted to be honored and trusted, a bow tie, I say, doesn't hurt. For it isn't your tie that most people will eye. It's the soup stain there on your shirt. I'll see you on the Internet. We asked you what well-known audio company aims to become the Netflix of music radio. BBC Radio 1 has a new strategy that starts with commissioning 25 hours of programming that will be made available on demand. If you have an editorial you'd like us to read on the show, please get in touch with us at fullmontyshow at scottmonty.com. And if you've enjoyed this series, please consider becoming a patron and show your support at patreon.com slash scottmonty or click on that orange button 
directly on fullmontyshow.com. And please, consider leaving a rating or a review for us on iTunes. Be sure to check out other major news stories from the September 26th edition of the Full Monty Newsletter. Facebook overestimated video metrics for two years. Later, it issued an apology. Will it be enough to keep brands investing in video, or will it jeopardize the social network giant's bet on video as the dominant medium of our future? You'll want to check out five charts detailing the influence of mobile apps on digital media consumption. And most people want this one quality in a leader. What is it? It's in the newsletter. And one final programming note. There will be no episode next week, October 3rd, as I'll be in Hawaii. Well, that's it for this week. With any luck, your brain's a bit bigger now. Thank you for making me a part of your week and for being exposed to the full Monty. Until next time, I'm Scott Monty, and I'll see you on the Internet. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the Full Monty newsletter and this program at fullmontyshow.com. A hooey hoo.